Hey there guys, welcome to the 300th video on my channel, gaming wise, and uh, yeah, it's just going to be a little sort of story about the life of uh, Nuts and how I got to this point, I guess, um, and as you can probably see on screen right now, it all started with Sonic, pretty much, uh, my love affair for gaming started with the Blue Hedgehog, and uh, that was it, pretty much, ever, ever since then. Like, the BBC Micro was good, but it only had things like Frogger on it. And uh, the Atari 2600, again, only really had Frogger and games like that on it. Pong, that kind of deal. With the Mega Drive, and my dad got me a Mega Drive, it was just like, BOOM, son, this actually feels proper, like an arcade system. Like, it feels good. So, uh, yeah, my old man got me a Mega Drive, and uh, Sonic 1. And it's been a love affair ever since, pretty much. Uh, Mega Drive, still probably one of my favourite consoles. So sad that um, Sega was forced out of the gaming wars, as it were, the console wars. But that's not what we're here to talk about. We've made it to 300 videos, guys. Is that not amazing? Is that not the most incredible thing you can think of? Well, fair enough, 600 videos would be more incredible, but as a point of reference, 300 quite good. And uh, I didn't realise this until I was putting the video together last night, that it's exactly a year since I uploaded my first YouTube gaming video. So, double bonuses for that, I guess. So, uh, yeah, thank you for joining me on, on this journey. There are some of you who stick out more than others, like the... Some of you comment on every one of the videos, some of you have been there from the beginning, some of you are just there and are enjoying the content, sharing the videos out, all that good stuff. Uh, but Rudy's Cat, you have been the most supportive guy, I swear to God, all the all the videos you comment on, everything just seems to do really well. And uh, yeah, mad shout outs to my, uh, to my awesome subscribers and to, to, and to Rudy's Cat. All the, all the awesome people. And uh, YouTube's been great fun. YouTube has been so much fun. The uh, the fact that I met people like Awesome Endeavours, and even though Vekin's not around with us anymore, we still got to meet Vekin, and he was cool. We've met Leo Maxwell. I've met Trev, Joe, Trev from the server. Um, I've, me and Matt the Geek have rekindled our knowledge for one another, because we used to work at the same place. And uh, I think Matt the Geek was doing gaming videos a long time before I was, but he was also still working at Hollywood. Uh, he was working at some place that I can't mention due to legal legal restraints. We'll just we'll just say he's working at Hollywood. Yeah, he's a movie star. That's that's how uh, that's how Matt the Geek operates. But um, yeah, I've met some really cool friends. I've got Peacemaker as well. Uh, Peacemaker never really used to. I don't think he. He used to watch a lot of videos on YouTube and that. He used to watch um, video game carnage and all that sort of thing. But um, when I started doing it, I think he got into it as well. And we've we've had some fun adventures. We're still meant to be uploading Resident Evil 5, um, which we have got recorded. It's just scheduling problems. But um, the next the next 300 videos will definitely complain, contain a Resident Evil 5 playthrough, definitely. 100%. And, uh, so that was Sonic 1, and I'm pretty sure you can all guess what the next game in in the selection is going to be. Um, and I'm gonna I'm gonna leave it with you for a few seconds. 
have a drink. Of course, it's Sonic 3 and Knuckles. Of course, what were you expecting? Fecterman, Aladdin? Nah, Sonic 3 and Knuckles all the way. This is my favourite game of all time. I, I know that's a that's a big thing, but this game probably had the biggest impact on my childhood, on my life in general. Just, just Sonic and Knuckles, do you know what I mean? And I should probably explain, the name Knuckles doesn't actually come from the red one in this game. We used to play this game at school called uh, Knuckles Down. I used to be quite good at it. You got you got a coin, and you fired it at your friend's knuckles, and then they'd fire one back at you, and then you take it in turns, and then the first one to sort of give up lost, basically. And uh, from that, sort of just spouted Knucks. But it was it also helped that I suppose that Knuckles' nickname was Knucks as well, and I was a huge fan of uh, Knuckles. So I think it all sort of just worked together in my favour. But, um, yeah. This game just blew me away when I was a kid. This was like the most exciting thing ever! Oh my god! Um, and I remember waiting for new Sonic games when I was younger. Game Master and things like that. Waiting, reading the reviews and waiting for new games to come out. Going up to, um, uh, what was it called? Prestige Video was the name of our rental store, right? And you used to go up there and rent games and you'd get them for three nights and it'd cost you like a fiver or some crazy shit like that. And, uh, yeah. And I remember getting loads of games from there, like Bubsy, the cat and all shit like that. And it never did anything for me, they were just uh, rubbish games. And then this came along and it was just like, this, this is awesome. This is a game of games. And, uh... The fact that you could connect it, the fact that you had Sonic 3 and you could connect it to Sonic and Knuckles was just out of this world. It had never really been done before, I don't think. The, the closest we got to that was Micro Machines, where you could plug an additional two controllers into the uh, into the cartridge itself. And I was always weary of doing that, because once you plug something into the cartridge, it was more than likely that the, mic the Mega Drive was going to freeze on you. That's just the way it was, it just, uh, I'm not having a go at the Mega Drive, it's one of the best consoles ever, ever invented, I'm sure if I got mine down now and plugged it in it would still work, the same could not be said about my Xbox 360, so uh, fair enough, there's a massive gap in technology there, but at the same time, the Mega Drive's still working, the 360 isn't, there you go. But, um, yeah, the expansion cartridge, Sonic and Knuckles, was, it was just unheard of. It was unreal back in the day. It was just incredible. And, uh, uh, it was just, yeah, something else. And, uh, if you put Sonic 2 on top of it, you could, it, it changed Sonic 2 for you. If you put Sonic 3 on it, it changed Sonic 3 for you. It made it an entirely new game, pretty much. And, uh, yeah. I, I just, some of these games are never going to leave my mind. Ever. And, uh, I think this, this Sonic 3 and Knuckles was a big one. It was also the first video on my channel. So if you go back to July last year and, uh, check out my channel, you'll see that this is the first game that I played on my channel, so... It's got to mean enough, do you know what I mean? It's got to mean enough. Now watch this cheeky flag catch. Yeah, 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 and I miss it, and then BOOM LIFE, SON! Just the luck of the draw in Sonic and Knuckles. This game smiles on me a lot. There'll be points where I'll be darting through, going under spikes, and they'll just come down as I'm gliding through, and it'll just miss it. It'll give, it'll give me my, it'll give me the benefit of the doubt, which is nice. Uh, but yeah, this game, and then I can't really remember what my second game was, it was probably Gemini Rue or something like that, but I just wanted to make sure that this was the first one, because this was, this was the most important game of my life, this is why I'm here today doing what I'm doing, because this game made me a gamer, I guess, like, this got me started, and that's, that's why we're here today, to celebrate that, I guess. 300 videos down the line. This is where it all started. So. Yeah. It all went downhill after Sonic 3D though, really, didn't it? I say this numerous, endless times in the uh, podcast that we do, the Cast Number podcast. 
and uh, the other guys take the piss out of me. They say that they can, they know it's the worst game, Sonic 3D. They know it destroyed a franchise um, that only only won it back slightly with Sonic Adventure 1 and 2. But um, yeah, the other guys take the piss out of me for it all the time. They're like, what? Sonic 3D, the best game Sega ever released? Hell no! It was really gimmicky. It just felt like a a gimmick. If they'd have kept it to this style, they probably would have had another success on their hands. Not a fan of Sonic 3D. This boss is quite easy to deal with once you've got a fire shield. Quite easy indeed. I was going to do Carnival Night Zone, but that's already been done in Gamertag. If you go back and watch the Gamertag that like I started, uh, it goes from myself to Peacemaker to Matt the Geek uh, to Awesome Endeavours. So be sure to check that out. And I did uh, Carnival Night Zone in that. Now, this game, this is the later down the line. I wanted to include a couple of PC games, but they wouldn't record properly, and I'm really sorry about that. Um, there'll be a list at the end of what I wanted to do. This game came out on the PlayStation, and I swear to God I was like the only person who ever saw the TV advert for it. And uh, because of that, I went out and got it, I went out and bought this game for my PlayStation. And uh, it actually turned out to be one of, the, one of the better games I bought on the PlayStation. I remember there being all sort of like Gex the Gecko, Crash Bandicoot, Spyro the Dragon, and they were fun, but they felt a bit like, mm, like kids games, do you know what I mean? And while I was a kid at the time, it just this this game felt a lot better, and you'll you'll probably see why in a second. No, not because of the nudity. You know, I saw this game and I was just like, "That is so cool! I need this game." And there's only <laughs> the only other game I did that with was Populous. It was this and Populous the beginning. Because when we saw Populous on TV when we were kids, they had a five minute ad break on TV and they had to keep putting at the bottom, this is an advertisement, not a program. So, just to give you an idea of how people advertise games back in the day, there were five minute long TV ads just for Populous. So, uh, just imagine that for a minute if you will. But this game, this game is called Assault or in Europe it's called Assault Retribution and I'm pretty sure not many people have heard of this but it was one of the games that left a huge impact on me again like Sonic 3 and Knuckles and just games like that because it was the first game I remember physically properly wanting, do you know what I mean? Like, I need to have this game, rah, 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 throwing tantrums if you don't get it, all this and that but um, yeah this game was awesome and uh, I was lucky enough to be able to play it with the controller uh, this time as well uh, the last few times I've done this, I've had to do it with the keyboard. And I, I might do a Let's Play of this game at some point, but it is difficult as hell. It is so hard. Um, I don't think there's a there's a difficulty slider or anything like that. It's like a side-on shooter kind of thing. It's like a 3D, but side-on shooter. Um, I don't really know how to explain it. It would probably just be better if we get into the game. But yeah, this is another one of those ones that I wanted. Um, like, like I desperately wanted. Um, I'm just never gonna forget it. <laughs> never. This uh, this was one of the best games I had on PlayStation. Um, I can't really think of a lot of good PlayStation games. Uh, a lot of people would say Final Fantasy VII and things like that. Never played it. Probably. I know a lot of you are going to be freaking out over that. Final Fantasy IX was my favourite. Uh, I never really got into the others. Um, but the, the, to each his own. I've never been a fan of the RPGs. Like that style of RPGs. I've always been talking sort about of Fallout. Um, into As you can tell, this is just a sort of run and gun. Throw everything up there and grab the power-ups, get the weapons, save the princess! Oh yeah! There's no princess to be saved, which is a good idea. There's a little boss creatures halfway through the level as well, which is kind of cool. 
Um, I probably should just do a little bit of explaining. The, uh, you probably realise there's a little down in the bottom left there with all my items and stuff like that. I can use that health kit at any time. I can also pick up ammo and stuff like that just to keep you going. I can use it. I can actively, I can actively say when to use it. You get four different weapons. There's like a blaster, a bolter, something else, and then there's Starfire, which is like your special weapon, and you charge it up and you can just do something like that. Um, but this game is awesome. This game is fantastic. Even picking it up to play it and doing the video the other day for the uh, for this 300 video special was just like a blast from the past. Do you know what I mean? Where I where I constantly play Sonic 3 and Knuckles like once every month. I know that sounds a bit sad, but honestly, that game is just you need to keep you need to keep your skills polished, man. Um, when I picked this up, I haven't done it in years. Picked this up for the first time and it still felt right. Do you know what I mean? It took me right back to, to back in the day when the world was a simpler place. Uh, this was my PlayStation game, definitely. None of that Crash Bandicoot, Gex the Gecko. They were all good, don't get me wrong, but I was more Dreamcast, I reckon, back in the day. Sonic Adventure and Sonic Adventure 2. Uh, jet Grind Radio, them sorts of things. Or is it Jet Set Radio? I never get that right. Is it Jet Set Radio for the Europeans and Jet Grind Radio for the Americans? I think it might be JGR for the Americans. So, uh... I think, uh, I might try and get one of the other Chaos Crafters to co-op this with me. Because it is a co-op game as well. That was the other amazing thing. It was a co-op shoot -em up you know what I mean? It wasn't just like 1v1 fighting games and things like that like we were used to with Street Fighter and Mortal Kombat and all sorts of things. Um, it was a proper cooperative game. You, you, and your, your, you and your partner helped each other to make level and that was, that was kind of cool. And the camera angle does change as well. It's not just set like side on or side like, like up in the air side on. You do get some missions where they're sort of like top down and that kind of thing. And, oh, I've got my new weapon here which is nice. I think this is the last one. Oh no, it's the beam weapon. Okay. That thing above me was just not I might try and get one of the other Chaos Crafters to go through this with me, but they need to be a local Chaos Crafter. It can't be like Maxwell or someone like that who lives in America. I might try to go and play into this and go out and visit them. Hey, do you want to play this PlayStation 1 game with me, please? Please? Yeah, I don't think it's going to happen if I'm honest with you. But as you can see, the camera's changed again, so now we're behind the character and that sort of thing. So, this is cool as well. This gets a bit awkward here with the jumping. When I did my test, I managed to do the jump first time, but then obviously when you press record, cast of the recording! You can't do anything like that. Yeah, for its time, this game was pretty good. Ar Armored Core, as well. There are loads of games that left an impact on my life that you're not going to see in this video. Purely because they were either too difficult to record or I'm But um, these, the four that I chose to highlight the, the Nux story, as it were, um, they, uh, they're the ones that had the most impact. So Sonic 1, obviously, Sonic 3, Knuckles, Assault Retribution. And yes, it is a PC game. I wasn't just talking about my entire life. I had a PC when I was younger. I used to use my old man's PC, and uh, he had a game on it called Raptor, Call of the Shadow. You can now buy that game on uh, GOG. But unfortunately, it doesn't record. And I would have loved to have put that in in my. Uh, there we go. It's a jump file. I would have loved to put that in this video, 100%. Raptor, Call of the Shadow, is a fantastic game. I remember whittling away hours upon hours of my life. Just, uh, it's a, it's a, it's like a, you are a plane on a, on a upward scrolling sort of shooter, sort of, like you're, I can't, I think Galaga or Galactica or some, one of those side scrolling sort of shooty space games. But instead, you're in like an F-16 Raptor, and uh, you just oh, it's awesome. I might if I could get like Camtasia or someone do something like that working, then there will be a rap. And that's the other thing, guys. If you'd like to see a playthrough, I'm sort of I'm open to suggestions. I might not do them first time and blah blah blah. And I might have 
sort of like there might be some issue behind it like people say oh do metro last night or something and i refuse to do metro last night because they charged five extra dollars for a difficulty setting which is poor game and stuff so i won't there are some games that i won't do for like reasons like that and blah 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 blah, blah. but um yeah, if you guys have got any suggestions, games you'd like to see, it helps me because I like to check out games as well, if you know what I mean. I like to find out what is going on and what people enjoy watching and that kind of thing. And I am going to make an effort. I do. I have made an effort for the past 300, but now I'm going to make a special effort for the next 300. I've got Sony Vegas, I think it is. Or... Yeah, it's Sony Vegas, but it's number 11, so it's be barely any of my family. Um, I got that now, so I've started doing better intros, better sort of um, music. Um, I'm trying to make it so because now I can I can adjust the audio volume of my voice compared to the sound volume, so I can now do that up and down no problem. Um, I've tried to keep background noises out of the way. I'm sorry if you can hear the fan in the background today. Um, that is just one of those things. I've got to keep my windows shut. It's either hear the kids screaming or uh, hear the fan in the background. I'd much rather it was the fan in the background because the kids are pain in the ass. But um, yeah, I am. I, I promise you, I'm making a, a, an effort. I'm trying to get all the other couch crafters to sort of. I don't know. I'm trying to teach them how to make video intros and stuff like that, and like, or I'm offered to make them video intros and that kind of thing. But um, yeah. You probably already know what the last game is. You know. If you've seen this cutscene, you know what this game is. You know, 100%. This this game was important because it gave birth to sort of Quakeathon. Um, without Quake 3 Arena, I would never have got into Quake. I know that sounds crazy, sort of going backwards. Um, but from there, I went on, played the other two, uh, some expansion packs. Well, I don't think I played the expansion packs until I got them on Steam. And then uh, Quake 4 came out, and that game was another amazing sort of like, whoa, this is incredible, like, sort of deal. I think I got Quake 4 with my Xbox. It might have been... Oh, no, 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 what happened first? I got an Xbox One, not an Xbox One, but an Xbox, original Xbox, you know, the green and blah, blah, blah ones. And I had Halo on that, and that game was awesome. And then when the Xbox 360 came out, I got Quake 4 with my Xbox 360, and then after doing that, that sort of, like, gave birth to quake -a because Quake 3 was such an amazing game, Quake 4 was such an amazing game, and uh, the other two had loads of expansions, there was loads of content, so quake -a was born out of that, and we've actually made, managed to raise money for charity on this channel, do you know what I mean? Like, we did that as, as subscribers, as friends, be it the Chaos Nova squad, the Bit Viper crew, whatever, we made money for charity. We have helped people with the channel. Do you know what I mean? Like, we, we're we doing good. And we're now up to 300 videos. And we're going to continue to keep doing good. Do you know what I mean? 100%. I, I enjoy this more than anything you could possibly know. My job is basically... I'm with the node. The network, the node. And my job, basically, if you think about it, is playing games to entertain other people getting to meet other people, having great fun with other people, and just, you know what I mean? Just having a good time. It's so much better than sitting behind a fucking desk in an office, or stacking shelves in a, in a shop, do you know what I mean? I actually feel like I'm doing something with my life. I actually feel like I'm giving something to, to everybody. Not everybody, but you know what I mean? I feel like I'm giving something back. And, uh... If, to keep you guys entertained, I've got to play video games. I do the occasional charity event every year, do you know what I mean? Uh, every every 20th and the 4th, Quakeathon now. From the rest of my life, it's going to be 20th and the 4th, going to be Quakeathon. Like Ze like the, um, I think it's MC Gamer does Zeldathon and that kind of thing. We're going to try and keep Quakeathon up for as long as possible. Um, and I suppose that's sort of, in a way, I was saying thank you to id Software and Child's Play Charity and that kind of thing, just for, just for being there, I guess, just for being, making the games and making it so we can play the games for charity, that kind of thing. 
making good from gaming. Oh. Basically, is what I'm getting at here. We are doing a good thing from gaming, and uh, you got all those people who are like, violence in video games and all shit like that. They're all a bunch of idiots. So we don't need to listen to them. Video games are a force for good in the universe, and I, I guarantee you this. Guaranteed, 100%. So, uh, yeah, look forward to Quakers on next year, 20, 2014 is the next one. Um, I'm already looking forward to it. I feel like I should have another event in between now and Quakers on. Um, obviously, we've got things like Hardcore Chaos, um, which is going to be easier now that they've added certain game types to Minecraft. Um, some other events, but I think there are. Uh, we need another charity event. Maybe not a Quakers on. Like, because obviously we're already doing Quakerthon yearly. But, um. I don't know. Maybe one of the other Chaos Nova guys, or maybe one of the subscribers, one of you guys, one of you awesome, awesome people can, uh. can, can give us a recommendation of something we can do for charity. And I want to get more involved with you guys. So, like, if we did, like, a Twilight Takeover, not a Twilight. Actually, that's not a bad idea. If we did a Twilight Takeover sort of end of season come on and just have a poke around with us, sort of, say, thanks to the subscribers sort of deal. Um, or we put the world download up for Summit and we did, like, uh, a video of that. So that'd be me and DR and then some of the subscribers. And then we just do an episode like that, guest featuring some subscribers and that kind of thing. I don't know how that would relate to charity, but... Um, uh, we'll figure it out. Myself and JD Mulletman as well, right? JD Mulletman is a boss. If you haven't already, go check out his cha channel. He's quite into Quake and that sort of thing, so check him out. We've been talking recently about getting into this thing where we do like a game exchange, a Let's Play, Let's Players Game Exchange, as it were, a Commentator's Game Exchange, where, like, where I complete Singularity, I, I would then put this game as like a library of available games, and then JD Mullet Man would say, Oh, I quite fancy Singularity. Have you finished with it? And I'd be like, Yeah, I, I finished with Singularity. You can grab that. By the way, he killed me there because I was too busy reading his trash talk. So, trash talk in Quake 3 Arena definitely works. I promise you this. But, um, yeah, back on subject. Sorry, ADHD mind. JD Mullet Man and myself have started sort of like, Oh, we're in the process of starting the game exchange. So we'll f I'll finish a game like Singularity, and JD Mullet Man will say, "Oh, I quite fancy uh, Singularity. I'll send him the game at no cost. The thing he needs to do is donate either a pound or a dollar to Child's Play Charity to sort of say, or not to sort of say anything, just to sort of so we're doing good, even though we're swapping second-hand games to one another." Uh, the publishers aren't going to be making no money off of it, blah, 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 but we can still do some good in the world by giving it to Child's Play Charity or something like that. So, uh, the game exchange, and it means that I don't have a load of games sat on my shelf that I'm not playing. It also means that other people can complete collections and stuff like that, as long as they put games into the, into the game transfer area. Um, and we're going to, we're going to start by just doing it with people who do Let's Play videos, YouTuber people. Hi! And uh, if if it goes well, then we'll try and do it with the subscribers as well. Because the uh, the only problem we see with it really being is that people will join the game exchange and they'll take loads of games, do the donation, that's all fine. But they won't put anything back, which will result in a negative economy within the game exchange. And that then won't work because then there'll be no games for people to trade, and Child's Play won't make no money, or whatever our charity is won't make no money, and uh, that's that's not what we're after. <laughs> Fair enough, we want to share share the joy of the game. It's like giving Singularity to JD Mullet Man was like, yeah, you're going to love this game, bro, do you know what I mean? Like, you're going to really enjoy it. It's like Quake 4, but like with some more abilities and that kind of thing. And uh, I think he's enjoying it. I don't know, I, I haven't I haven't heard... Uh, I haven't heard from him about Singularity yet, but I think if he's installed it, he'll be enjoying it. But, um, yeah, so, that's basically just the game exchange, and, uh, that is another thing that started as a result of the YouTube channel. So, there you go. Um, but this has sort of been like, I don't know, I guess the first half, because the story doesn't stop with Quake 3 Arena. Um, but I just, I just want to say thank you to each and every one of you. Everybody who's watching this video, everybody who subscribed to me, everybody I've met on the internet, thank you. You are legendary and I love each and every one of you. So, uh, here's to another 300, guys. 
See you next time. Lots of love. Bye-bye.